Hello and welcome to Discover Dorico for May 2021. Uh, this is a live session, so uh, if you want to write any questions about this topic, which will be playback templates, then uh, you can get in touch with me in the chat. Um, so, uh, oh, hello, we've got some hellos from various people. Uh, nice for you to join us. Uh, if you're not watching this live, then there will probably be some links underneath the video uh, to kind of time sections of various bits. So there'll be probably a troubleshooting section and a other sections, so uh, click on those if you need them. Uh, before we get started on this one, uh, I just wanted to also highlight that on our resources page, uh, as of the this last week, we now have a Dorico First Steps Guide, which was written by Lily, our document writer. So, uh, as well as the videos and various other things, and there is a little four-page getting started PDF I did ages ago, but there is now this First Steps Guide. So if you click on that one, you'll be taken to this page, Dorico First Steps, and there's a web help version and a PDF version. There will be other translations coming, but at the moment it's uh, just in English. And if you click on the web help version, then uh, it's uh, uh, fully documented and there's lots of images for exactly what to do. Now, I'm sure a lot of you on this, if you're watching these sessions, you're probably thinking, I already know all this stuff. However, for other people, friends of yours who you're saying, you know, you should get started with Dorico, this is a great place to get started now because it will teach you from the beginning all the things that you need to do. If you don't want the web help version, there's also a PDF version, so you can download this or use it in your browser. And as you go through this one, it has a table of contents. So for example, here's the same section in the PDF for creating a key, key signature, all the same images uh, and everything else. So it tells you exactly what you need to do, all the shortcuts and everything else to create um, a, a, a document. And you'll see over here, there's also on this first steps uh, one, there's also the PDF of the project and the score and a blues song as well. So the resources are there as well. And this is the piece, one of the pieces you'll create if you use the first steps guide. So you can see it's got all sorts of notation examples and things that you could possibly want all in one file. So it's a very good way to get started with using Dorico. So like I said, that's on our resources page. So if you go to dorico.com forward slash resources, then you'll be directed to this page, which uh, has that resources section on. Uh, also, what might be useful for today's session is on this same page, there's the an expression map section, which I, maybe I'll relabel one day, because this is really for playback templates, which is what we're talking about today. Uh, but I know that expression maps are the things people look for, but actually playback templates are the things that uh, kind of encapsulate all of those expression maps in something a bit more useful for Dorica, really. So this is where you can get some of the, um, the, the links for some of the playback templates that already exist. Um, and there's also some expression maps on our forum and that kind of thing. So there's a link here to the forum uh, and you can get some from there. So today's session, playback templates. Uh, so I'm going to be having a look in the chat over here. Uh, <laughs> Mark was hearing me twice. So good they named me to No, they didn't. Um, so playback templates. Today we're going to be looking at creating playback templates. How do you create them? How do you share them? Because it would be nice if you've spent the time doing it, then uh, share it with some other people. Uh, and you can also maybe uh, find other templates that other people have done and uh, create bespoke templates with multiple libraries. So if you've got different sample libraries and you would like to use strings from this and woodwind from this and brass from something else or change the piano, that kind of thing, that's what we're going to look at today is how would we go about doing that um, depending on which libraries you've got and the options that are in Dorico. So... Uh, no questions so far, just lots of hellos. Well, hello from the UK. Uh, one day we might have summer, but at the moment, summer seems to be bypassing us. Yeah, let's not talk about that. So, so the first thing I want to look at is why playback templates? Um, now, this applies to all versions of Dorico. So you can be doing this on Dorico SE, Dorico Elements, or Dorico Pro. Um, I suppose the limitation is with SE and Elements, of course, you can use less players, so you'd be able to assign less players. But if you're using Dorico SE and you want to replace the normal piano with the ivory from Keyscape or whatever, then you can do that um, in Dorico SE. So all of these options are, uh, are basically the same in any of the versions. But why playback templates? Well, if we have a look in Dorico, so let's just bring up... For example, one of our standard templates, so if I load the, the classical orchestra template from the, the Steinberg hub here, then when I do new from template, Dorico will load all of those instruments. And you've already been using templates without realizing it, because what Dorico actually does is it obviously you know, shows you all of the instruments and they're all loaded here in setup mode. But in play mode, 
uh, over here on the right hand side, it all it uses our Halium player. So here you can see it's just finishing loading all of these samples. And the way it's doing that is basically by using a playback template. So over here in the play menu, the playback template section. Now I have a lot of playback templates listed in here because I've been playing with all sorts of things. You will have at least the factory ones. So depending on which version of Dorico you're using, it will have selected the correct factory icon. Uh, for one of these playback templates. You may also have, for example, Note Performer if you have installed Note Performer. And that's their playback template. So using this playback template, Dorico knows which sound each of these instruments needs. So it finds the flute and it loads the flute sound into our Halium player over here and the oboe and everything else. So it's already using uh, a playback template. Um, one interesting point while we're talking about our, our own player, what you can find is that if you've been in setup mode here and you've been, uh, for example, adding other instruments, so let's say we added a triangle and let's put it up here instead. And I don't know, maybe you didn't want the bassoon today, so you've taken the bassoon out. I'll delete the player and the part layout so it's gone. So now I'm, I'm making a, a more bespoke file. Then what you'll find in play mode is that you will still have the bassoon listed here uh, and it's added the triangle at the bottom. So it's adding in any extra players for the, that we use for this template. And if you've started right from the beginning with a blank, completely blank template and added all the players you needed as you've been going, you'll have them listed in whatever order you'd added them in, in this player. Um, and actually what you might want to do is if you've been doing a lot of adding and especially removing instruments, you could end up with a lot of extra instruments loaded in the Halion player that you don't really need. So you want to remove them. And the best way, quickest way to do that is just go to playback template. It will already be selected. Just press apply and close. And over here, it will actually disappear slightly, come back, and then the little uh, play icon isn't green anymore. And when, once it's green, you can then play your score again. In the meantime, Dorico is reloading all of the instruments in here. So now you can see it's removed anything we didn't need. So it's basically removed everything and gone back and, re and reloaded only the things we need. So now we don't have bassoon, and we do have triangle in the order that we specified in the score because it's reloaded all of the instruments. So that can sometimes save you a bit on resources. I've seen some files sometimes from people where you know, unbeknownst to, to you, fair enough, um, you've been adding or removing uh, instruments and you might actually have a lot more samples loaded, uh, which could potentially cause you playback issues. And so resetting the playback template means it's kind of a, a clean version. It's only loading the samples that, that you need, not using any extra resources on your computer. So that's the first thing. Um, now, one of the things you might want to do is kind of mix and match using different sample players, different, uh, you know, various different options. Um, let me just uh, check the, oh no, there's a, no, that's okay. Um, and in answer to Glynn's music, uh, no, sorry. Um, so various, there are various other sample players that you could use. Um, so let's just have a look at some of those and maybe kind of some of the, the differences of a couple of these. So we've just been talking about our sample player, which is Halion. So with Dorico by default, you get Halion Sonic SE and this, let's call this our sample player. And in ours, you can have up to 16 slots in each player. And if Dorico needs it, it will just load another player and start filling up those 16 slots. Now, Dorico, when it's using our, our own one, it's kind of it, it does that a, a bit internally, and it's the only one that works in exactly this way. In that it also has blank slots that you can use if you want to load in any extra instruments or you want to, uh, you know, tweak things. There's a lot of things you can tweak in Halion, and our sample library is pretty good, but it's not maybe as balanced for an orchestra or for, you know, for, because we've just given you lots of instruments, but there's more you can play with in here as to, to what you need to do to, to get a balanced sound for your orchestra. Um, other, some other sample players are, are a bit different. So, for example, Note Performer is a common one that lots of people have. And in Note Performer, it will load in all of the samples. Here you can see as a quick example of basically the same score. Um, I mean, it's loaded all the samples in here automatically, but you can't use any extra slots in here. You have to use a playback template with Note Performer for it to load any of the samples. So it's another kind of important thing with, with Note Performer, but it just goes through and it loads for each instrument in Dorico the option. Now you can click on these and you can change one of the ones that's there, but you can't add uh, new slots and kind of a, a new samples that way like you can with, with Halium. So a slight difference with Note Performer relies on a playback template. 
Um, there's also some other options. So, for example, this is another multi-slot player, if you like. So this is the Aria player from Garitan, and this can be used sometimes with Personal Orchestra 5, or GPO 5 is its name, or JAB, which is the Jazz and Big Band. Um, and in this uh, one, you can see there's, you know, there's, again, there's 16 slots, common number. It's a MIDI thing. Uh, so there's 16 slots, and you can load in, although often people have done it manually, um, load in instruments into each of these slots as to what you need for, for each of these. So you can have one player in Dorico and you can load in multiple instruments. So similar with the, the Garitan player, but Dorico doesn't use it in exactly the same way. So Dorico doesn't have that internal kind of interface, if you like, to kind of automatically load things. So that's why we'll use a playback template uh, a bit later when we're using the Garitan player. Uh, some other players, some other options, so things like Native Instruments Contact. Now you can load all sorts of things into here, so I've loaded some manual random things in. So Virtual Drumline might use it, Vintage Horns from Big Fish Audio might use it, Alicia's Keys, so other Native Instruments um, uh, instruments might use it. Yeah, there's, there's all sorts of things you can load into Contact. Actually, commonly, although Contact can have multiple slots, and you can see we've got uh, multiple instruments here, this probably isn't how you'd use it in Dorico commonly. Um, a lot of people just have one contact instrument with one in, one instrument in it, um, or maybe variations. So you might have variations on your marimba in one player, and then have another player with with other uh, other samples in it. And that then is a bit more similar to things like um, Spitfire BBC SO. Spitfire, some of the things you can use in contact, some of them use their own bespoke player, where each player only has one instrument in it. So when you're assigning this in Dorico, and we'll do a bit of this, you'll see that um, each instrument gets mapped to uh, each uh, you know, an individual item in the instrument rack in Dorico. So that's one instrument uh, per player. It's not a 16 slot or anything else. It's just one instrument per player in that case. Similar to that one, the VSL synchronized, and there's a playback template for this as well. Um, so the, the synchronized player is also it's one instrument per player, so you'll have multiple players if you have multiple instruments in Dorico. So that's a, another example. And then there are some other ones. So for example, um, also from VSL is the Vienna Ensemble Pro. Um, this is very different in that it's basically kind of if you like a container program which you can put other things like Hallion and uh, and Contact in. That's actually more useful if you're running things on a separate computer. If you're moving all the resources basically for all these samples to another computer um, then you might want to use what's called VE Pro, Vienna Ensemble Pro. Um, and again you can set up a playback template if you want specifically to, to use that and, and map to it. Uh, and one example would be the Iconica playback template, which you can get from our resources page, which is set up, and this is a screenshot from it, is set up to, to use VE Pro should you want to. There are other sample players as well. So we're going to look at a few examples today. Um, I'm not going to look at Cinebrass and, and East West, but theirs are actually similar to the Spitfire and the VSL ones. So, you know, there, there's lots of sample players you could use um, in Dorico and, you know, just some of the examples between them. So uh, is there any... Uh, let me just check... Uh, uh, yep, yeah, okay, so let's carry on. So today we're going to be looking at these. If you've got questions about other things, then I'll try and I'll come back through the comments and uh, look at those today uh, at the end of the session. But today what we're going to be looking at is so setting up a playback template to start off with. So creating an instrument, changing the sample player, and we've just looked at some options, assigning an expression or percussion map, and we'll cover that in some, not too much detail, because there's some other sessions we've done on a bit more detail of those. Uh, check it works, important. Um, saving the endpoint configuration, which I don't think we've looked at before in any of these sessions, and that's important because then you add those endpoint configurations to a playback template, uh, and then you can look at how you can mix and match some of these things. So whether you're creating a playback template from scratch, or you're kind of going to be working from near the bottom of the, this list, taking an existing playback template and using some of those endpoint configurations to, to make your own bespoke ones, we'll be looking at that today as well. So let's start with the basics. So um, the uh, the very uh, basic bits of this, I guess, to, to you know to start off with, uh, I suppose initially actually, um, you know, you might want some of you know BBC SO for example, because we're going to uh, start looking at that one to uh, as an example, and that's where you also find the expression maps. Um, so let's have a look at a kind of a, a a new file and what what you would do, how you would set all of this kind of stuff up. So, 
new blank file. Um, what we're going to do is say, right, if we were to add an instrument to start off with, so let's say we'll just have a violin, um, then what Dorico is going to do, of course, over here is load that into our Halion player. Now, I don't want to use our Halion player, I want to assign it to something else. So what we're going to do now is look at how you would set up an instrument f to for any other player um, that, that it, you don't already have set up. So let's say, for example, the BBC Symphony Orchestra. Um, if, if you want to try this out, actually, there is a free version of the BBC Symphony Orchestra, so basically the same kind of things would apply with that one. Uh, you'll choose it from this, this slot here. Um, you'll actually find over here that then the violin should be assigned to it, but make sure when you expand the player here, this is where you can actually see which instrument or which slot um, this is loaded into. And as I said, this player only has one instrument per slot, so it'll be using channel one because it's the only option. And when you click on the little E, then you will then get the interface. Actually, today I want the core interface for this one. So this is the um, BBC SO um, so BBC Symphony Orchestra from Spitfire. And you can choose in this drop-down list, you can choose various instruments, and when you click on it, it will load, and you'll get one instrument and all of the playing techniques loaded down here. So what we also have here is when you click on, in this particular player, when you click on these techniques, it also happens to tell you the key switch over here. So long notes are C sharp minus one, and legatos are C minus one, etc., etc. So what you now need to do is, uh, you know, you can check if it's working, for example, if you turn your carrot on or toggle it, then, then you should hear the that sample player playing. So, and when you then go back to your interface, this is easy to do on multiple screens, but I'll do it for a second here. So you can see, We've got the keyboard at the bottom. So, uh, you know, you, if you play on the keyboard, then it, it should work, and you can see the little keys lit up here. So we've got this mapped to channel one. This doesn't really have any options anyway. It's actually accepting any MIDI channel, but that's a, a good idea. It's using this sample player because it says zero 02, and this one says zero 02 over here. If you're wondering where zero 01 has gone, zero 01's actually hidden. It's the Dorico beep that would be used for the various types of MIDI click. Um, but so you can't actually see it, but that's what it is. That's where zero one has gone. So we start at zero two. Why did we not start at zero zero? I don't know. Paul, why did we not start at? I don't know. Anyway, so so you can tell this one's mapped to this player. You can also click on this little keyboard icon if you're not sure, because this little keyboard icon over here on the left hand side will bring up the exact correct player here, uh, and now you've got all your te techniques. So I've look, we've looked at this in other sessions before, but you would need an expression map. So if you wanted to create an expression map, here's the here's a, a list of, you know, I've got some extra ones at the bottom, but you'd have all these HSO ones uh, that you come with a standard with Dorico Pro. If you click the little plus, you can create a new expression map. I'm not going to do a full expression map, but let's say we wanted to, let's say BBC SO Violin, for example. Um, you can give it various other options in here. There's also a description field you can label at the top up here, which is a very good idea. You could set some key switches. So let's say we were going to use C-sharp minus one, the longs for natural, and you can press plus, and you can say legato, and you can say... Uh, I'm just doing this very quickly as, a, as, as a, an example. Expression maps really are kind of covered in another session, really. But this is how you would set up an expression map to do the right key switching for that... Uh, that instrument. Now the reason this is important, and the thing that you will probably forget a few times, because I've done it several times, is then go, hmm, if I add some notes into here, and then put a slur on them, then that should be legato. And when you go to play mode, now this option, this little button here, show the playing technique lane is very useful when you're working in expression maps. And what you would expect to see here is natural, and when the slur starts, in fact, where's, where's my notes here? When the slur starts, it should go to legato. Why isn't it going to legato? Because you haven't assigned the expression map. The other thing you might find is you had an expression map loaded, and now you're getting random, you've changed a sound, and now you're getting some random low notes sounding somewhere, and you don't know why you're, it's playing random low notes or, you know, that kind of thing. You need to click on this little cog over here on the right-hand side. So in this, this panel over here, click on the cog for the endpoint setup. I recommend giving this a label. So I'm going to say BBC SO Violin. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll see why, because this label will re replace what it says over here, because once you've got multiple instruments, you don't want them all to be called BBC Symphony Orchestra, because you'll never know which one's which. So give it a label, and change the expression map. So double-click in here, use the drop-down, and change to the expression map you've just created. Uh, and then press OK at the bottom. Now, so my notes here in right mode 
when I go back to play mode and play mode has redrawn itself, this now says legato, hooray! So now you've correctly mapped things and you, you've checked. There's also, when you're doing expression maps, and I do expression maps a lot, so I have a shortcut set for expression maps. If you're gonna do this, go into the preferences and set yourself a shortcut to get to the expression maps dialog. Um, you can choose, for example, legato and the little play button at the bottom to make sure that you're hearing the right things. So if you've assigned staccato, for example, you click play, you'll get some staccato notes instead of some legato notes. So you know you've mapped things correctly and it's all set up. That's the check it works in that tick list we had earlier. Now, now you've got it all working and you've got your endpoints set up here, listed and working and everything's labeled and it says BBC SO violin, brilliant. Now you want to save the endpoint configuration down here. So there's an option here, right at the bottom for save endpoint configuration. It'll give it the same name uh, and you can then save that and so you've got a configuration for that one instrument for the BBC SO uh, violin. Um, importantly, actually what you've actually done is you've assigned here a solo instrument and ideally what you also want to do is add a section player. So at the bottom down here, hang on, let me get rid of, get out of the way. At the bottom down here, you've got add section player. You also want to add a section player of a violin because you can have a different sound assigned for solo and for section. And if you use the BBC SO Pro and various other sample libraries, you might have a different violin sound that you want to use. And our HSO player does the same. You get a different sound for a solo player versus a section player. And that can also be in your ex uh, expression, uh, with different expression maps, that can also be in your endpoint setup so you can use it in your playback template. So, to skip forward, um, a Blue Peter, here's one I made earlier. Sorry for anybody who's not in the UK, you probably don't have Blue Peter. This is then what I would have, what I what I did do for, uh, for the strings for BBC SO. So this is kind of jumping forward a few steps. I've assigned violin, viola, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for section players and for solo players at the bottom here. And I've mapped them all to an individual instance in, of BBC SO here. And in each one of these, we can click on one at random, I've then assigned an expression map. So often between families, the expression maps are quite similar. So I've got a BBC SO core strings. They all have the same expressions. Um, so they can all use the same expression map. So I've assigned that here. And also so that I don't get too many extra um, audio channels loaded, or in some cases too many extra items in the mixer, which we'll also looking at later with the ARIA player, I've put a tick in the box here and I've, I've reduced the number of audio out outputs to show in the mixer to one. I've only got one instrument, so this one little uh, setup only needs one output in our Dorico mixer. Now I could do save endpoint configuration, but now because I've got lots and lots of instruments loaded here, I want to save all of these as BBCSO strings. So I don't need to save individual configuration files. I can go to the bottom here, right at the bottom of the screen, on the right hand side, save endpoint configuration. And if I tick that, then I can give it a name. I've already got some in here, so I'll, I would call it BBC SO Core Strings, for example. I'm not gonna save it because I've already done that one. And that will save the endpoint configuration of all of these instruments and all of this setup in here and all of the expression maps that would be required into one file, which it would be an endpoint setup that, that you can then use. And then the next trick is to use those endpoint setups. So you can then go to playback template and make a new playback template. So let's click on plus down here. And this is where you can make a playback template. And in this entries column, we will add the endpoint setups that we've already created. Uh, oh, sorry, have there any uh, questions? Uh, no. Oh, is it, uh, are expression maps are only available in Pro? No, they're available in Dorico Elements and Dorico SE. Um, this uh, still applies to any version of Dorico. So for playback templates, we now want to say, let's say we're going to make, uh, I'm just going to call this a test one because uh, I've already got one that I've made. And at the bottom, you have Add Automatic and Add Manual. Add Automatic is the HSSE, which is our... Um, Halion Sonic SE uh, player for Dorico Elements SE and Pro, and the Pro version, of course, also comes with the Halion Symphonic Orchestra. So that's a, uh, that's that one. So these are the one playback configuration, one endpoint configuration for all of those. So you can add that as an automatic one, and that basically is that's what our standard um, playback template is for Dorico Pro. 
Down here, I also have note performer listed and I have silence. You'll have silence as well. So if you there is a silence template, if you've got nothing to load and you really don't care about playback or for speed of loading a file, you can you can choose the silent template. There's also note performer. If you own note performer and you've run the note performer installer, then it will also have installed the playback template and all the configurations needed to use note performer. And because it's installed with that installer, it's also in the automatic section. So now I have this one here, which is the HSSE. Now, in the manual section, this is anything I've created. So this is a big old list of the endpoint setups that I've just saved over here. So I previously saved BBCSO core strings. So I can choose that one. And now it's in this list of entries. Now, the important thing with this list is Dorica reads from the top down. So at the moment, it will never use BBCSO core strings because this entry has everything in it. It has all of the instruments and it has all of the string uh, options. It has the solo strings and section strings, etc, etc. So Dorica will go, oh, I've got an option, I'll use it from this one, and, and that's what it would use. It would never get to this one. So what you might want to do is use these arrow keys to move or bump some of the things up in the list. So now I've got BBCSO core strings. It now will never use Halion to load any of the string samples because I've added solo and section uh, players to my core strings. If you go to endpoint configurations at the bottom, you can also see, so if I click on BBCSO core strings, you can see here are all of the things labeled and which players and whether they are section players or solo players that's in that configuration so that you know what's going to be loaded and what's going to be used. So this is uh, basically just a useful reference. You can also delete some of the, the old ones if you don't want them, but there's a, a useful reference for which instruments have been loaded uh, and are, are used by this endpoint configuration so that you know which order you want to put these in. So if I now save this BBCSO test and press OK, I now have it in my list here. So if I was to apply uh, this, um, this to this file, it would reload all the instruments. However, because I've now got that as a playback template, if I go to anything else, so let's go back to this one. This is the one we had loaded earlier. So this is the standard um, Halion install. So uh, yeah, Halion, you know, it's gonna load all the samples into Halion. This is the classical orchestra that we had earlier with the bassoon removed and the triangle added. So now what I can do is I can go to play, playback template, because I now have that playback template on my system. I can choose my BBCSO test that we've just created. I can just press apply and close. Dorico got rid of Halion from here and then reloaded all of the things it needed. So now you can see the play button is no longer green. We can wait for that to come back before it will uh, work. And when I click on these, here's the first one. And the Halion player, in a second, when it's finished thinking, and all the other ones have, it's loaded all of the other instruments. But as soon as it got to any of the stringed instruments, it's loaded the BBCSO options. So here, for example, it's loaded the BBCSO options, and it's actually ticking away in the background, uh, adding some memory for that one. So, so that's now a playback template for using a couple of different libraries for uh, uh, which ones you need. Now. Uh, and what you might also want to do when you're doing playback templates is have a kind of a catch-all option. So, for example, the BBCSO options that, that I've done, you can download for free from our uh, resources page, Core Discover and Pro. None of those libraries um, from Spitfire, th these particular BBCSO ones, have a choir or a piano, for example. So what you might want to do, for example, is this. You can take the current one, you can just press the duplicate button, make a new version of it, here it is, where I've got the brass, winds, pitch percussion, etc, etc, and then I've added at the bottom the automatic HSSE and HSO Pro one as a catch-all. Any other instrument, recorder, tin whistle, piano, choir, like I said, they, they don't exist in this library. So if you just apply my BBCSO Pro template to your score, you might find some of the instruments don't load because they don't exist in that, that library. But adding this as a catch-all option at the bottom, if you want to, means that you can then 
any instrument that kind of falls through the gaps, if you like, falls through the net, will be caught by the HSSE and HSO. Another good one actually is Note Performer. If you have Note Performer, because Note Performer, if you add it as an automatic one at the bottom, also has lots of instruments, has a better harp as well, because we don't have one. So, you know, you could add Note Performer as your catch all. I would like to use these fancy expensive libraries, and then if you don't find anything else, use Note Performer. And you could add that as your own option in here. Um, you can also, uh, similar with VSL, so VSL have done all of these playback templates, you can download these if you own uh, any of these special edition, uh, synchronized special editions, if you go to the VSL site, when you log in, you'll be able to uh, click on the notation uh, option in your download list and you can download the Dorico um, uh, option, which is all the playback templates that you can use for your libraries. Once you've installed those, you've got them in here. But even if you have all seven and the two plus libraries, there isn't, for example, a choir. Um, so what you might want to do is, again, do the same. Add in an extra one with an HSO at the bottom, which would automatically load the choir uh, so that you know you're kind of you're covered then with, with, with whatever options you, you want to use. So that's to the start of how would you kind of use a couple of different libraries if you wanted to in a playback template and once you've got a playback template and you're 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 happy with it if you've made one for you know one library like the bbc so for example i've done a garitan one here that i've almost finished um you know or anything else then there's an export button so you can export the playback template you've made so i know that what some people have done before is shared the expression maps they've said here's the expression map i've got and when you're in the expression map dialog in here, you can cheat. You know, I've created this expression map with these options in it, for example. I can now go export library and I could share that with somebody else. But then they will have to create the instrument and map it and assign the uh, expression map for every single instrument in the orchestra. If instead you've already set them up, you've made a playback template, then when you've made your playback template, just click the export button and you will export, in fact, I just to say, by the way, th this should say save. It says open. Apologies. Um, but it, when you click open, it will save you a file, uh, which is a playback template. So here, for example, I made a vintage horn, so the Big Fish Audio, and Gary Tan's Jazz and Big Band Orchestra combined uh, playback template. I could share that with somebody else. They'd have to own the libraries, of course, but I could share that with somebody else. And then you get a Dorico underscore PT file, which is the uh, playback template. And with playback templates, actually, you can use this import button if you want to in the playback templates dialog, import your playback template. You can also, here, you can just drag and drop this into Dorico, and it'll go, oh, do you want to, do you want, normally, it'll just import it. Mine says, do you want to overwrite it, because you've already got it. Or you can drag it onto the Dorico hub if you want to. Just drag and drop the playback template, that will install it onto your computer, and then you can then use it. If you have a playback template that you've set up as your custom this is what I always want to use on my system because I've got these libraries connected. Then in the Dorico preferences, in the play section, there is an option for the default playback template. Now this will automatically default to either Pro Elements or SE, depending on which version of Dorico you have, but all of your other playback templates are here. So if you've made a custom one, then you can, uh, you know, you can uh, sign here, choose your own custom playback template to it, and you know, you, you use whatever you like. Um, and now we have some spam in the chat, so there we go. Um, so, signing your own default playback template so that you can then decide. You know, that, that's the one I always want to use on this system. And the idea with that is that you might, for example, if you have a, a laptop which doesn't have all the libraries on, you could use a different playback template by default on there. And then on your studio computer, you can assign your own um, custom, you know, custom template that you would use every time. Now, the, what you might find is if you then send the file to somebody else, they might get a little pop-up message that says, I, you don't have this playback template. And that's basically just a warning then, that if you want to reset at any time, just go to playback templates in the play menu and choose the default one, whichever version of Dorico you're using, press apply and close, and see here I've got BBC SO loaded, but if I press apply and close, it will go back to the, the standard one. So if you're sharing files with anybody else, Dorico project files, 
Other people might not have the same libraries, but it's fine. They can always reset things back to the, um, the default ones that they've got. So let's have a look at a couple of other examples. Um, I'm going to go to the jazz big band one here because um, one of the other players we looked at was the ARIA player. And the ARIA player from Garatan uh, is a, a, a multiplayer, um, but there's a, there's a couple of other quirks that you'll have with that. And so I, what I mean is it's got multiple slots. So in the play menu here, I've just loaded our standard big band template and it's loaded, of course, our uh, Halion player. We've actually got two Halion players in here, only because the first one has 16 slots and we got as far as bass and ran out of space. So then when you click on the second one, then you'll see the drum kit is in the other one. Doesn't matter, Dorico knows you know, where, where it's put things, that's no problem. So if I go to the play menu here, and I'm gonna go to playback template, I'm gonna choose my almost finished Garitan Jazz and Big Band. So I'm gonna press apply and close, and that's gonna use the ARIA player, and you see I've got multiple ARIA players here. Now this is a slightly different way, and you don't have to use it this way, but this is, I thought, I thought might be a sensible way of, of using this library potentially, but there's a couple of caveats, so let's look at this one. So if I click on the little E here while things are loading, have you got any more? You have. Done? Good. Uh, so here we can see we've got the ARIA player, and uh, this has the soprano saxophones. It's got two sopranos, and it's got three altos, and it's got four tenors, and two baritones. And you might think, well, why? Well, because that's the options that exist in uh, Gary Tan Jazz and Big Band. So they give you two sopranos, and they give you three altos, and four tenors, and two baritones. So I've loaded one of everything into this sample player. Um, and partly that's because it doesn't use a huge amount of RAM. I mean, with even you know with this whole template loaded, it's using half a gig of RAM. So I thought I might as well load one of everything because then it's there in, uh, you know in advance, easy to use. But what it means is that what I've had to do is I've assigned all of those saxophones here, and if I click on the little cog, you can see wh when Dorico loads them, it says I need an alto, so it goes to the alto slot, not slot one, it goes to the alto slot. Alto 2 will go to the second alto slot, and it would it, it then has a blank slot because that would be alto 3. And the same with the tenors, and then it's got spaces for the other two tenors, and then one of the baritones and not the other. So actually we need 11 slots here. So because I don't know how many things you would need, there isn't a way to tell Dorico only put with, with this player. Unlike Halion, it can't only load the number of slots it needs. So it's kind of, it's assigned 11 slots, now you pick the the ones that you need, Dorico, which it's done. And here I've ticked the number of audio outputs to show in the mixer. So I've said only show 11, because I don't want to show you a bunch of blanks at the end. You'd get 16 slots and you don't need 16. But what it does mean is that when you're using our mixer, you will sometimes get some blanks if you've not used those instruments. So here you can see, ignore the beep, the jazz and big band, and then you've got a blank. So it, this was between soprano one, soprano two, the two altos, and a blank for the third one, and the tenors, and the baritone, and then it starts on the trumpets. So then it's gone to the next player. So you can see the first 11 uh, slots. Um, the outputs are because they're all stereo, so it says one and three, because it's saying they're, they're all stereo outputs. So, so it goes up to the baritone and then has a blank, and then it starts on the trumpets. So it's then going to the next player here, where it's loaded, Five, uh, five trumpets? Oh yes, because one of them has a muted option, uh, a different muted option. And then uh, there's a blank, because actually you can have a fifth trumpet. Um, see, trumpet one's got two, so you could have a fifth trumpet. And then you can also have five flugelhorns, but I haven't added five flugelhorns to this piece. So I've again assigned 11 slots, so you've got five trumpets and five blank spaces before you get to the trombones. So sorry about that. You you can tweak it if you want to. So we've just looked at you know some of these options. If in this file you don't want that many, you can tweak it. You can change the slots. You can you know you can change some of the things. But by default, you will with this library get some blank spaces in your mixer, uh, and that's why. So what I've done is some of these things are quite useful. So for example, in the guitar and bass section, I've added the acoustic guitar and, and the electric and a mellow one. So if you just write the word mellow as a as a playing technique, you'll get the mellow guitar sound, and Dorico will switch automatically. If you're using the uh, drum kits, for example, Dorico will have assigned this uh, GM Classic Jazz drum kit by default, but all you need to do is go to the drum section over here, and if you just change the channel to a different channel, I've already loaded for you in this playback template the other drum kits, and over here in the cog, 
it means I've already loaded the percussion maps for all of those. So if you just switch to use, oops, press cancel. If you just say, actually, I'd like a brush kit, you can go to channel three. And Dorico's put on channel three and everything's already loaded. The percussion kit's loaded. You know, it, it will now play back with that one instead. Um, so, you know, there's there's a few tweaks and things that I still need to uh, to do to this one, but you can use that library. Now, you might then want to say, well, I want to use it with some other things. So let's just have a quick look at a, another file. Because um, this is good for, you know, for, for big band, but there are, there are other styles, aren't there? So you might want other playback templates. Uh, let me just check I've not missed anything notes-wise. No, that's good. So we know why we've got too many options in the mixer. Uh, at least so you know why there'll be some blanks in there. So this file is going to load with, yeah, jazz and big band. So it's got a trumpet, a tenor sax, a trombone, a baritone, and a drum kit. So when I press play, also depending on which library you're using, you might, you might, or you might not get falls depending on whether they they exist. So this one, actually, the trumpet has them, but they're very quiet. There's a tiny fall at the end of that one. Now, in this one, in play mode, of course, you've got, in the trumpet section here, loads of trumpets loaded for one trumpet, and you've got loads of saxophones loaded for one saxophone. So, and actually, maybe for this style, it's not, you know, not the best example. So maybe you want to kind of mix and match some other libraries to, to use with this style. So let's go to playback template. Let's make a new playback template. And let's call this, uh, I don't know, it was a riff file we were working on, so we'll call it that for now. So I'm going to go to Add Manual. I could add, um, you can see I've got some jazz and big band options in here. I've also got another library called um, Vintage Horns by Big Fish Audio. So I'm going to use the trumpets from uh, Vintage Horns. I'm going to use the saxes from there, and I'm going to use the trombones from there but then I'm going to use the drums from HSO. So let's get everything else from our standard uh, library. So if I press OK, I've got this one loaded. If I press Apply and Close, it will now load all of those. So what Dorico is doing this time, different sample players. So if I click on the little E when it's loaded in a second, in your own time contact, it's not like we're all watching you and waiting. There we go. So here we've got the, uh, the contact player now, because that's what uh, this sample player uses. And you can see I've got a trumpet open, and I've, already, I've also assigned a trumpet mute into the same player and a flugelhorn into, into here. So Dorico knows if you just add a flugelhorn or if you write the word mute, it will switch between these various things based on the expression map that I've set up for it. But it's all encapsulated then in that playback template. And then Dorico said, oh, well, and I also need a drum kit. So here we've got the, the Hallion player. So now we've just loaded the playback template. And when you press play, So this one has falls in it, for example. So when you choose any of these notes, I choose a different instrument this time, and you go to play mode, then you'll see these notes highlighted. And in the playing technique lane, you'll see here, if I hover, come on, Dorico, if I hover, it doesn't want to tell me today. Normally, when you hover over that, it would then tell you which technique. You can just say it says fall in there as well. It's probably because I've highlighted something wrong or got too many options open. Um, and doing a live stream. Um, so Dorico is then picking you know, the, the correct options based on the notation, but the playback template means you can easily switch between uh, you know, uh, any of these things that you want. Now, when you choose a playback template, all of the slots over here get reloaded. So all of the assignments between the instrument over here and which slot it's going to will all get reloaded, which means the Dorico mixer will get reloaded. So here you can see now, instead of all those options we did have for Garitan, um, now it's just loaded a trumpets and the saxes. It's actually for the saxes loaded a few channels, so it only needs the tenor and the baritone, so we've got a few empty slots, then the trombone and the drum kit. Now, and then Hallion by default, I said, oh, look, here's 16 blank channels. So you've got a whole load of blanks. So if you want to get rid of these, you remember you go to the endpoint setup, you choose the number of audio outputs. I only need one, so one's fine. Press OK. So now the mixer is now smaller, and I only uh, and I have all the, you know, the, the drum kit in here. I can't really do it for these. 
I need you know at least some of these uh, saxophones, so I'm going to have to live with the blanks. I'd have to make a new endpoint configuration, and you could do an endpoint configuration per instrument if you really want to. If that kind of thing annoys you, then then you can do. But I thought it was useful to put all the saxophones here in one player. So it depends how you use it, but you you have options. So the things that get reloaded, all of those slots have got reloaded. All of the expression maps have got reloaded. The mixer has been reloaded. So any reverbs and things you would have applied, they would have got reloaded as well. Um, but things that won't have got changed when you switch playback uh, playing techniques, so when you switch playback templates, is the automation lanes. So if you've added any manual options here, so for example CC11 is sometimes used for expression in some libraries, if you've added in manual options here, then they will still be there. Whether or not they correctly affect the new sample player you've got, we don't know. Uh, you just have to you know, try it, and or, or you might have to delete them. So it may be that if you've tweaked things here, or potentially you know, velocities or the dynamics lane, anything like that, they will still be there in your file. They won't get reset when you, when you change the playback template. So it might be a difference between did you ch want to change the volume with either velocity or dynamics here, or did you want to use the mixer as to which one's going to get reset when you change your playback template, if you go to another computer, if you give the file to somebody else. Because it could affect balance, because you don't know with another library or when you're mixing libraries what the balance might be like between all of those instruments. And so you, know, you may have more, uh, more work potentially to do on that. Um, so if you want to keep that information, because it's important to you, then you might want to use maybe the dynamics option here for each of the instruments rather than the mixer, because the mixer would get reset um, when the playback template loads. Uh, you will, by the way, also find in here, just, just for completeness, if I delete all of these, then you will find sometimes that there are velocities in here which have appeared by magic. And that's because Dorico will be applying velocities um, or, in some cases, depending on your library, it will have been applying uh, CC1 messages, for example, for dynamics. And that's based on the dynamics and the uh, articulations written in the score. So those could potentially get reset. You'll see them in grey in here in the, in the lanes. But if you've added something with the pencil tool or the line tool, you've added it in manually and you'll see them as black lines, they, they wouldn't be reset when you apply a new playback template. Uh, so then, of course, share them. So you've made your playback template, you know, you, you've... Uh, especially if you've done well at the moment, I know I don't have, I don't think I've got a playback template for anything East West or Cine Samples or some of the other VSL things. Oh, actually, there is an articulate map for some of those. Get in touch if you uh, if you don't have one of those. We need to share a few more. There is, a, like I said, there's a forum post with some expression maps on. So maybe if you've done the Joshua Bell uh, violin or you've done the um, Cremona Quartet. Um, then if you make a playback template for that and you would like to share it, that'd be great. Um, and just click the export button, export that file and, uh, and share it. You can share the Dorico project if you want to. And I suppose it, you, we can then export it from that, um, from that playback template. Uh, expect, export the playback template from that file. Um, but yeah, you, you can export that and just send that playback template to somebody else uh, if they also want to use it on their computer. And inside that playback template, then you'll have the endpoint setups and you'll have any of the expression maps and percussion maps that you've used for that template. So instead of having to export all those bits, just share that one uh, dorico underscore pt file. And if you've downloaded, for example, the BBCSO template I've done or some of the other ones, you'll find there may well be a dorico file in there. But the most useful thing for you really is that it looks kind of fairly nondescript because it's, it's, you know, blank, no icon. But it's a dorico underscore pt file and that's the playback uh, information you want. That's your playing back, uh, your playing techniques and everything else in that playback template, PT. Um, so that's the kind of thing that you want to import then into your project to use with somebody else. A couple of quick troubleshooting things. If, you have l if you've loaded somebody else's file or even somebody else's playback template, for example, my BBCSO one, and things aren't showing up over here, what you might sometimes get, for example, is this where if you can see on this one, it's got some exclamation marks. So it's tried to load the Jazz and Big Band one, but it's got double exclamation marks. That means basically Dorico can't find the sample player. It's going, uh, you've asked me to load this, I've loaded the instrument, I've loaded the expression map, but I, I can't find the sample player to, you know, to load the instrument into. So what you want to do then is go to the preferences menu 
and you want to check in the VST plugins to make sure that, for example, in this case, the ARIA player is the one that's used, probably the multi one, is the one that's used for the Garitan stuff for jazz and big bands. You want to make sure that's in your allowed list. If it was the BBC Symphony Orchestra one where you would get an exclamation marks, then make sure the BBC Symphony Orchestra is in this allowed plugins list. It might have been accidentally put into the blocked list. So you can choose something from here you can click on this little arrow here. Don't click on allow all, especially if you've got multiple things loaded in here. Click on this little arrow and it will move it into this side and then it will be in the allowed list. Now, it then won't work because you then have to read this bit that says restart Dorico for these changes to take effect. So you'll need to restart Dorico. Um, also, if you've got, you know, think there's a problem somewhere, there's a clear audio engine cache which will clear anything about the, uh, these existing plugins and will recheck everything to make sure everything's okay. So that's a sometimes a useful button, but for any of this, you will need to restart Dorico to get them to take effect. So restart Dorico, start it up again, load that file, load that playback template, and then it should find the information over here. Uh, and I said also, if you, if you get a pop-up message when you open a document that says, something like this project uses a playback template that's not on this system. It might just be that somebody else has made a playback template that they're using on theirs. Don't worry, but we, what it means you might need to do is go to the, the playback template and reload one of your playback templates, whether it's one you've created or if nothing else, our stock factory uh, playback templates. It will reload all the sounds then so that you know you're hearing it for your system and, and not the configuration that they've got for their system. So, uh, let me just check some of the comments and things that, that are going on here, because um, that was a kind of a, a whistle-stop tour of things. So let me just check these. If you've got any other questions, now's a good time to ask them, and I'll get to them in a minute. Uh, right, so let's have a look. Rob German says, could we um, review the scripting feature? I've had no success with it. Well, there's no documentation for the scripting feature, and it isn't really officially finished. So I've not done it in one of these sessions, because... It's not actually really that useful at the moment. You can create a script and you can run the last script, um, but there's a lot of things you can't do in it. So at the moment, I probably would save your time at the moment and don't use that. Um, question about dynamic marks not affecting velocity-triggered samples. Um, well, they will do, depending on how your expression map is set up. So in expression maps... Uh, you know, which, whichever expression map you're using, so well, that's probably a bad example, let's try flute. Uh, over here on the right hand side, for each technique you can set the volume dynamic and whether the dynamics are controlling a controller change like CC1 or note velocity. So make sure you've got them set correctly here. In some cases, in some libraries, it would be CC1 and a secondary dynamic of CC11, for example, for expression. So make sure you've set them up here for the, the, the add-on switch sorry, the, for the base switch that you're using. Uh, and then that's how you tell Dorico how it needs to, to, to trigger volume dynamics. And the last thing, which I always forget every time I'm doing one of these, I've set them all up and then I go, why isn't it working? Because I haven't clicked on the cog and actually assigned the expression map to the instruments. I'm not using the right expression map. But that's basically the initial things to check. If that's not working, then you know, if you want to send us an example file, then you know we, maybe we can have a look. But that's how you would tell Dorico to either use uh, volume as a CC1, CC11, or uh, velocity. So ho hopefully that uh, helps, but that should do. Uh, I've answered that one. So expression maps, all of this stuff is available in any version. But of course, you're just limited by the number of players that you can add depending on the Dorico version. Um, there's a question, oh, same person again, Pablo, in the BBC SO templates to Carto notes aren't affected by dynamic markings as they're velocity triggered. I thought that worked because I thought I checked all of those and I did do a new version of that template recently, um, but that's how you would do it. So I need, you need to check in the, the staccato sample, <coughs> excuse me, is triggering with note velocity, whereas maybe the longs and the legatos are triggering, triggering with CC1 or, or CC11. Um, if that's not working, actually, uh, let me know. Ping me an email on discoverdorico at steinberg.de, uh, all one word, discoverdorico at steinberg.de, and I'll check that in the template because I ought to, um, if that's not working properly, I ought to fix that. Um, if you want a, a specific piano library, such as Keyscape, Pianotech, or Ivory, uh, yes. So, ah, yeah. I meant to do that. So, thanks, Dave. Uh, let's say you were using 
let's do a new one. Let's do a new one. So I'm going to choose, let's say we're using Note Performer, but we want to use some other samples with it. I meant to do this. So I'm going to duplicate the new Note Performer template so it starts with Note Performer. If I do add manual, I could also add to here, let's say, in fact, let's, let's just go for the, you know, our, our defaults to start off with. So let's say we want to choose HSO and we want to choose, uh, have I got anything else in here useful? I don't have a piano tech one, so I can't do that one. But if, you ha if I had a piano tech one or something else, then you could, we could do that with piano. So but we'll just use uh, Hallion for now. So now, uh, as I said right at the beginning, or near the beginning, feels like a long time ago, I know. Dorica will start at the top. It will choose Note Performer first. And then only if it doesn't exist in Note Performer would it get to this one. Actually, what I want to do is say, use HSO, use our defaults for specific things. Over here on the right-hand side, you can choose family overrides and instrument overrides. So you can say, for example, if I click plus, and now I've got this selected here, uh, this option, I can say plus, and I could say singers. So now when I click on Note Performer, it's not there. When I click on this one, it is there. So I now have an override only for any singer instrument. instrument. So soprano, alto, tenor, bass, etc., etc. So anybody in our singers category will then apply and will choose the sample from this one. And you can also do instrument specific overrides. So if I click plus down here, you've now got your instrument picker. So if I type the word piano, uh, you, in case you want a different type of piano, there's a few choices. But if I add piano, then I can also choose that the HSO uh, samples, our defaults, so it would be the Yamaha S90 piano, would be used instead of the Note Performer piano. So now Note Performer will do everything else. It's the catch-all at the bottom. But uh, this one will load specifically the singers from HS, which would be our uh, Olympus Choir, and the piano will load as a specific instrument override from this one. So let's say this is Note Performer and... HSO, uh, choir, and piano, for example. So I got, oh, uh, I've got two. I've, I've got another one. All right, I'll delete that one. That must be one I've tried before. I must have shown this example before. So note performer with HSO, choir, and piano. So if I can close this. Now, this file is useless because it doesn't have those instruments in it. So let's go for a orchestra, let's go for a bigger orchestra. So let's say, what might I have it? Let's say film orchestra. So we'll load the film orchestra template. Dorico is gonna go, right, I'm gonna reload with everything with your defaults, which is, because my default template is still, of course, BBC SO, uh, sorry, uh, HSO. So it's a standard uh, Dorico template over here. So in the play menu, I'll now go playback template. I wanna load the one I've just made, which is note performer with the HSO choir and piano. So I'll press apply and close. These options will disappear and be recreated. Like. That. So now it's loaded in here and you say, okay, but it's only loaded Note Performer. Why has it done that? Because this piece here only has standard orchestral instruments in it so far. You know, it's got keyboard, but it wasn't specifically a piano. And um, so I'm going to change, let me just uh, do this, say so change my keyboard and say instead of being a keyboard, I actually want to have a piano in this piece. And maybe I also want to add a choir. So at the bottom, I can choose my group, add ensemble, I can type sing, oh no, uh, do I want singers? No, let's have, let's have choir actually. And then I can add a four part choir. Now, obviously, I can resort the players in, you know, in, in this order. So I can say, you know, maybe I want to put the singers above the piano underneath the harp or something, you know, where, wherever you want to put them. So now I've got this, this set up. And now Dorico in the background will be going, oh, I need to go. And now I'm, I've already assigned this playback template, you see. So now Dorico is going, oh, look, I need to assign some other players. And also, if, you, if, if the order upsets you because they're not now in the right order, if you apply the playback template again, doesn't matter, but I'm going to apply it again. Then you'll see that actually, over here, if necessary, uh, Dorico can resort the order of these things. So now when I go into this Hallion option here, when it's finished loading, because I don't have a green play icon yet, I'm trying to be a bit quick. Here we go, it's loading. So now it's loading the singers first, and then the piano, even though the singers were added to the file last. So now, Hallion, our sustain Rs from the Olympus Choir, uh, will be used for the choir. Uh, the piano 
will be also used from here. So we've got our standard piano and everything else is going to come from Note Performer. So that's how you, how you could, if you want to, change individual items. So what we were doing there as a recap is in the playback template for the one we've just created. Click on the pencil. <coughs> we've chosen the option here and chosen a specific family override and a specific instrument override and, uh, and, and you can do it that way. This is also potentially how you could do um, things like, say, you know, your solo violin uses a different sample library to, to something else. You can do instrument overrides, but it depends what's in these endpoint configurations. So like I said, in the endpoint configuration, if it only exists for, and this is one of my errors at the moment, the, the vintage horn saxes only contain solo players, so it wouldn't do anything with section players. So you know you can you can mix and match then and decide which players, which type of player needs to come from which library. Create your own bespoke options. Right, let me have a quick check of uh, some of the other things here. Um, are the default playback templates global? Do you have to apply each on new projects? When you've created a playback template, which I we, we didn't hear, it then exists for any new pro well any project. Um, so, and if you make a default, if you make one of these your default in the preferences, that exists for any new projects. So, if you say this is my default template from now. All new projects you create will use that one, but any Dorico file when it opens will always load with the existing playback information it knows about, because that could be different, you know, different setups and things you've done. Um, but you can then apply a, your, a playback template you've saved, because any of these playback templates you've saved then exist on your computer to be used. And if you want to move them to another computer, export them. Or if you want to give them to somebody else, then export them. Uh, let me have a look. Um, Expression maps need a method of error checking or validation. Exciting incorrect expression template to wrong instrument creates playback bugs. Yeah, but there's not really any way of us telling, unfortunately, um, because all the expression map does is say, we're going to send this key switch. We've no idea what it's going to do with it at the other end, unfortunately. Um, there's no loop back from the instrument from BBCSO or any other player to say, yeah, you got that one right. No, there, there isn't one of those at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, so yes, um, that's where it, you know, it needs to check. And, and one of the things I often use to check what's going on is this playing techniques lane, because this will tell you actually what are we sending? Are we sending the right information? And then you know what's, you know, if it's coming out right at the other end as well. Um, when you share your file and they change, uh, okay, so if you share a Dorico file, which has your playback template in it, and they open it at their end, um, they will have your playback configuration, which may not work on their computer. It might be that, you know, if you've used East West, for example, and you've created everything, whether it's a playback template or just manually assigning East West, and you send that to me, and I don't have East West on this computer, then by default, that score won't, won't play back. Those instruments won't play back because Dorica doesn't know what to do with them. If I make some tweaks to that file just for the notation, for example, and send it back to you, I haven't changed the playback configuration, so it will still work on your computer. If, however, I then go playback template and reload our default or my own playback template and I send that file to you, it now won't work at your end because it's got my playback template. So yes, potentially it could be an issue, but it's generally better that the Dorico file keeps the playback information that you wanted. You don't want it to reset every time you open the file because that would be really annoying because you might well have tweaked the mixer slightly for a balance. You might have panned something. You might have you know, added some reverb that you wanted. You don't want that reset every time you, you've opened the file. So Dorico will keep that information. That's why some Dorico files really are bigger than, let's say, Sibelius files or a MIDI file or an XML file because the Dorico file also contains all the playback data uh, that's in that file. But if you want to reset it, use a playback template. You can you can reset it. Um, can you edit endpoint configuration files? No, not really. Um, but what I would do is, when I was making, for example, the BBC SO core one, I have a file which has the strings in it. And that's the file that I use when I make the endpoint configuration. So if I want to tweak the endpoint configuration, I reopen my Dorico file, which is my BBC SO core strings template which has the expression maps in it and everything else, I make a tweak to the expression maps in that file, and then I resave the endpoint configuration and overwrite the old one. That 
as long as the name hasn't changed, of course, on that endpoint configuration, it exists in the playback template, so that automatically updates the playback template. But that's how you do it. So I would go back to, have I still got it open? Yes. Here is my BBC SO core strings template. And in here, I've put various dynamics. And this is why I think the staccatos work, um, Pablo, but let me know. Um, so you know, in here, this is what I would change. And if I need to make a change to this expression maps, ta-da, or the, you know, anything else, I would make the change in this file. I would then go back down to here, and I would resave the endpoint configuration, which will automatically update the playback template, and I can re-export the playback template. Good question, though. Are you using VST2 or v VST3 version of the ARIA player? I don't know. Um, um, yes. <laughs> I, was, I thought I was using the latest one, because when I clicked the update button, it said that was the latest one. So I guess it's the VST3 one, but um, I, I, I don't think... I'm fairly sure it's the VST3 one, but let me know if that's a trick question. HSO saxophone is needed too. I'm not sure what that uh, r refers to. Um, super blonde, let me know. Um, do the expression maps and endpoint configurations work with VE Pro? If you're using VE Pro, you need to set up the, a new endpoint configuration over here. So, for example, when I did the Iconica one, I set everything up and I mapped it in Halion using these expression maps. And then I had to set up VE Pro. I had to connect VE Pro, so you can click the little plus here. I added uh, Vienna Ensemble Pro here, which loads. It's not really a player. It's loaded here. You can click Connect. It's not running on my computer. You connect it. Um, and what you're actually saving in Dorico at this point, so if I click on this, you're saving which expression map you're using in which slot and, and you know and the instruments, but actually they would all be using Vienna Ensemble Pro. So you would have assigned them to use Vienna Ensemble Pro. You would have given it a much better name than Vienna Ensemble Pro. And if you look at my Iconica uh, template, which you can download from the resources page, then that's what's done. So I had to make a new endpoint configuration. So once I'd done the Iconica stuff in Halion, I had to basically do it all again to make it work in VE Pro. Now, I already had the expression maps, which does make it easier, but I did have to go through a lot of this dialogue of you know, mapping the instrument. It was already in the right channel, but mapping it to a different output, making sure the expression map was correct, saving the... I didn't save it. Yeah, saving the endpoint configuration here for those family of instruments. And actually, I used a separate instance for each of the families, so, so I knew it was going on. So I saved, you know, three or four. So I think if we have a look in my playback template for Iconica, the standard Iconica one, I've got woodwinds, brass, pitch percussion, unpitched and strings. And I also then did a VE Pro one here, which is the VE Pro endpoint that I saved for all of the same things. So it knows it's a different mapping. Dorico knows you know, does it have to go and load an instrument or where it has to send that, that information. Uh, you'll notice I've also done one that has HSO on the end because Iconica doesn't have all the instruments that you might want either. So that's my fallback is it will then go and load them from HSO. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, you can you do all this with VE Pro. You're just saving a different endpoint configuration. Oh, accidentally pressed play. Uh, right, uh, next question. Hang on a second. Um, why Babylon Waves with Cubase cannot be used on Dorico template? Because, now I have not used those, but I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that the Babylon Wave stuff tries to make, it's designed for live, so that when you're playing live on a keyboard, you're always using the same controller or the same key switch to change that, that effect. So if you're using the Babylon Waves, you know, player at the other end, then you want to use one of their expression maps to send the right key switch. So you you probably could, but it, it you know doesn't necessarily, I don't know, does it make sense to do so? Because you're not playing it live. Dorico doesn't care whether you're using a different key switch for violin or flute, or a different key switch when you when your violin goes to a different sample library, because if you have the right expression map, it will just do that switch for you automatically. I believe the Babylon Wave stuff is designed when you're playing it live into a door from your keyboard, you always have the same key switch for staccato, for example. Um, but Dorico doesn't really care. It doesn't need to have the same key switch because it's not doing it. 
it's not playing your keyboard live for you. Um, but I believe it should work. I just don't have any Babylon Waves expression maps, but they should work. And you can import Cubase expression maps if you want to use them that way. Um, hang on a second. The factory icon in the menu is quirky. The factory icon is a factory. It's exactly a factory. It's a bit like factory records. If you go and look at the factory records uh, record label, it's a factory. It, it's just a, anyway. It's a factory. Uh, is there a way to have one or all lanes open as default on the player page? On this page here, when you click on these, you are opening one of these options. If you hold down Command on a Mac or Control, then you can expand all of them at the same time if you want to. So yes, if you want to have them all open, then you can do that. And if you hold down Control or Command, then you can contract them all like that. Um, it's a little bit annoying because if it makes it difficult to scroll sometimes. So if you expand them all like this, then you need to be over here on this very left-hand side to be able to scroll properly. Because otherwise, if you're in here, sometimes Dorico thinks you're scrolling something else and the scroll doesn't quite work. Um, so you might want to be over here to use the, you know, to, to scroll properly. Or Because uh, inside the page here, of course, you're going to be scrolling the individual instrument track. Um, so that, you know, that might not help you either. Like, these are all moving. So you might need to be over here. But yes, command or control, and you can expand or contract all of those. Uh, let me know, uh, VST, VST3 ARIA is not multiplayer. You might know more about that than I do. Um, is the multiplayer one then not VST? I don't know, sorry. Uh, come back to me on that. Email me if, if there's a, a problem on that one. Um, Yes, I thought there was an ARIA. I've just seen your next message. The ARIA multi can is outputting to a separate separate state. Yes, I thought I, that's the one I was using, the multiplayer. But if I'm wrong, uh, let me know. In my email, discoverdorico at steinberg.de. And uh, is there documentation somewhere for the expressions provided or allowed by HSO and other bundled VSTI? It's a good point. Um, the default ones, I think, I, I don't think there necessarily is. There probably is in the manual for the Hallian Symphonic Orchestra. Um, it, I think it has in there what the options are. Um, it's kind of, a lot of people, they just accept those ones as, uh, as the default, but I don't know if there is a full list of them. Um, what I do try and do when with any of the playback templates I do is, because I've had to work out which instruments are available, which options are available in the expression map. I've then written some documentation for it. So every time you'll get a, a, a playback template from me, there'll be some documentation with it. Um, and if you look on, for example, the, um, I did have it open here somewhere. When you go, for example, let's go to the, the Spitfire one, you'll download a zip file. And in the zip file will be an information page kind of like a readme, an important information which will list things like, you know, which options are available or not, which instruments are available or not, uh, and how some of those work, um, so that you can get the, the best out of it. But I don't know if there is for, for HSO apart from if it's in the HSO manual itself. Um, how did the expression about control the chords player? Um, there is a chords track up here, if that's what you mean. And the chords track just shows you any chords that are in the file. So if you've added a chord to your project, uh, like this, then in play mode, you will get a chord here. Over here, you can make that playback, um, but there isn't a way to assign uh, an expression map to it, because normally you'd probably just be using, oh no, though, oh, uh, maybe there is. Mm. If I assign the chords track to it, yeah, it's going to show up here. No, it's not. I'm not sure you can, because that isn't violin 2. Because um, normally for the chord track, you'd be using a piano or something, which is just using default. So I don't know if you can. If that's important and you really need it to, drop me an email at discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Maybe, maybe there's a way, but I'm I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, and this little uh, again, you've got a piano button, so you can load then the the, the right sample thing. Um, but you know, and show it and that kind of thing. Make sure you click on this uh, little um, speaker icon as well, because otherwise you won't hear anything. Um, but yeah, that that's how you can make the chords play back. But I don't know if you really need to or want to uh, add an expression map. Let me know if you do. 
Uh, oh, the, uh, sorry, Rob meant the four lanes velocity CC dynamic and technique. No, you can only do this. You can't open these by default. So and if I do this, then they are not loaded for all those other instruments because it would get quite big anyway. Maybe we, we've got, you know, we've got some ideas on some of these because some people might want more than one controller lane. So how many controller lanes would you want us to open by default? Um, but yeah, maybe we can look at something on that in the future. But no, you can expand them, but you can't open all of those lanes by default, unfortunately. So I don't think there's any other questions at the moment. The questions are good, though. Thank you. Um, so I will now uh, tag with all of the times at the bottom so that you can then see um, exactly what's going on. You can refer back to this video and find all of the, 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 useful, the useful sections. Uh, but basically, it would be great if you want to now make your own playback configuration so that you can choose this library for woodwinds, you know, like we said, for the families of instruments. Uh, when you're up here, you can create your own uh, options. Here's a test one we did with your own family overrides. So you can say, this library I want to use uses strings. This library uses brass, um, et cetera, et cetera. Or the specific piano, ivory piano I want to use, uses whichever library. So now you know how to create the endpoint setups to, to get into this list so that you'll have a big old list of things that you can choose from. And then you can put all of those endpoints together in a playback template. When you choose that playback template in any of your projects, it will then automatically load all of the instruments for you. So hopefully that'll be quite a useful time saver. Um, the, oh, Dave just asked, keyboard shortcut to expand all the tracks was control or command, depending on if you're on Mac or PC. Uh, I will now, oh, a couple of people have now answered that. Thank you. So, yeah, let's end this session now. If you have any further questions, let me know on email, discoverdorico, all one word, discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Um, and let me know what you'd like to see in any more of these sessions. I think I'm running out of ideas now. Um, so... Is there a feature that we haven't covered yet or a new sample library you want to look at or something else? Um, then please let me know on that same email address as well. And like I said, I'll put time links in the description underneath this video. Uh, and when I've pressed stop in a second, I'll keep an eye on the chat in case there's any other questions. But if not, uh, email me. So until probably end of next month, I guess, let's uh, do another one of these. Um, then thank you for joining and I'll see you all on the next one.